Thank you very much, uh, Taylor and Charlie. Um, yesterday we were asked uh, a question about what we would like to focus on in this session, and I dare say uh, in this session right now, everybody's probably focusing on lunch. So uh, I'll make sure I stick to the 15 minutes. Uh, my name is Martin Williams. Uh, I work for a company called JBA Consulting. Uh, I'm technical director for their marine and coastal risk management group. Uh, I've been with JBA for just under two months and working on the Copernicus project for about two weeks less than that. So if you ask me a question and I don't answer it, I'm not ducking it. It's because I don't know the answer. But if you give me your email address or telephone number, I will ensure that I get the answer to you later this week. Why am I here? Uh, well, firstly, I was invited, and thanks to Caroline Acton of the UK Met Office for securing the invitation. Um, JBA Consulting routinely works with clients who will benefit from the CS, C3S uh, climate service and the data and the products, and in some cases, uh, they probably don't even know it, which is a bit of a flippant comment, but uh, uh, I, I believe it to be true. So. My role as a consultant is to educate and inform as well as uh, provide services. That basically makes us, JBA Consulting, a potential user of CS3 climate products, including Clean for Energy, including ECM, and potentially including some of the other services that we've been hearing about today. So it's been a very interesting session this morning. Uh, I also would like to uh, briefly describe a sister project that uh, we are involved in that seeks to make climate data available to the marine and coastal industries in Europe, or coastal sectors rather, in Europe. And also I'd like to demonstrate as part of that project how we in JBA Consulting will use climate data and metocean data to optimise offshore wind and port operations at two European sites. So who are we? Just very quickly, by way of introduction, we're a company of engineers, environmental scientists, designers, and scientists. Uh, we've got 400 staff in 25 offices around the globe. Um, we uh, deal mainly in coastal and marine engineering, coastal flood modeling and forecasting, and where I come in, marine and coastal risk management, which includes met ocean management, risk management. I believe that our position in this project today is that we are bridging the gap between Copernicus C3S science and the marine industry operations. I believe that's where we sit. The tool I mentioned is a, a, a web-based application that we've developed called Forecoast Marine. It's an advanced metocean risk management tool that allows the user to uh, plan, simulate and optimise operational and maintenance strategies and coast construction strategies uh, for marine and offshore projects uh, and from inception all the way through to decommissioning. It's based on state-of-the-art gaming technology and if you want to know more about that I can put you in touch with my son who knows more than I do. Uh, uh, to allow complex simulation in a virtual world is cloud-based, it's accessible anywhere on any platform and I'm not sure what I was going to put there, but I suspect it was that it's data agnostic, so we don't have to rely on any one particular data set, which will become clear in a minute. There's two components to it. One is the mission planner, as we call it, which I'm not going to go into any great detail about because we're not using it in this particular product uh, project, contract rather. Apologies to the EWs and <laughs> uh, But this allows the user to... Uh, he's got a specific project going on. He can identify how conditions are changing during the project. He can make plans to uh, um, adapt his, his um, uh, strategy to meet those changing conditions, and he can track as he goes along all through um, uh, a, a minimal number of clicks. The, the system is designed to be as user-friendly as possible and as easy to use as possible, and it has been deployed in a number of different sectors. Um, particularly offshore wind, uh, wave and tidal, offshore construction, and even rail and flood. And uh, as you'll see in a minute, we're also going to start looking at uh, ports and harbours with a climate context, within a climate context. The important bit as far as this particular project, contract, sorry, is... Uh, 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 what's the word? Involved, I suppose. It's the gamer mode, what we call the gamer mode. Now, this is the simulation where 
the user can simulate a project, uh, sorry, a, a strategy, a, a offshore maintenance uh, strategy or a coastal strategy uh, in a safe virtual world before the um, operation has to begin. He can therefore look at uh, revenue estimates based on his strategy. He can look at safety aspects based on his strategy. He can test different strategies very quickly and come up with an optimal solution for his particular job that he's trying to, trying to do. For example, uh, routine maintenance and uh, preventative ma maintenance and corrective maintenance for a wind farm, for example. And by doing that, he can then demonstrate due diligence to his insurers and financiers that he's looked at all the options and he's got the evidence to uh, support that. The marine and coastal project that is, uh, we're involved in as part of the C3S uh, programme. As far as JBA is concerned, at any rate, the uh, goals and objectives are pretty much for the first time making climate change science accessible to marine and coastal industry in a meaningful way. <coughs> and one way of doing that is to uh, launch an interactive web service which will link such users to uh, the CS3 climate data store products and indeed tools. Uh, as part of the project, uh, Deltaris, who are leading the consortium, are developing what we call Tier 1 Pan-European Wind Wave and Water Level data sets, which are similar to what's been developed in Klimper Energy and uh, ESEM and, and, and other uh, services. From that, we then identify and will develop appropriate Tier 2 climate impact indicators. These are user-specific, targeted to make the climate information Impact, climate impact information meaningful and relevant to those users. Some of them will be pre-computed, a user will be able to select a location and retrieve the existing uh, CIIs. Some of them will be uh, computed on the fly, for example, in the case of a port, um, uh, they, they might be interested in uh, finding out how many port days per year, i.e. how many days per year going forward would a ship of a particular type and a particular size be able to enter the port given changes to the wave climate and hence uh, tug availability, pilot availability and so on. But uh, I'll show you a bit more about that in just a minute. Some of the user cases that, or not some, these are the user cases that are being uh, explored as part of the, the, the contract. The first two are what we're involved in using for Coast Marine. We're looking at the effects of climate change on offshore wind farm operation and maintenance strategies, and I've stressed that uh, because we're not trying to overlap with other um, offshore wind farm uh, work that's going on. And port and harbour operations, we're interested in climate driven changes to port operability and hence to um, operational expenditure and profitability. Deltaris are looking at a thing called the sand motor. Some of you might be familiar with this. Um, it's beach mega renourishment on a big scale um, to combat erosion on the Dutch coast. However, there are some concerns that in the face of climate change, what they're doing might not be viable in the future, so they're interested in trying to understand that more. Uh, the next three user cases are all around uh, sea level rise and associated flood risk. DMI is interested in uh, the Dutch coast, uh, sorry, the Danish coast, um, particularly Copenhagen, where there's been significant flooding in the past. Uh, Ismar are looking at sea level rise in Venice Lagoon and hence the flood risk to Venice as a whole. And finally, UCC, and by no means least, UCC, University College of Cork in Ireland, are looking at flood risk in Dublin, Cork, and I believe also Galway, um, all of which have been inundated in fairly recent years. So how are we deploying Four Coast Marine in, in, the, in the contract? We're looking at uh, a wind farm offshore Dundee uh, in Scotland and also the Port of Tyne, which is on the northeast coast. And I'd just like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the help of Inchcape and Port of Tyne and the enthusiasm with which they've engaged with us. Certainly Port of Tyne had given no consideration to climate change in their operations until we pitched up and suggested that they might like to get involved and they, they grabbed it with both hands. So we've had detailed engagement with them, we've sat in front of them and explored with them what they think climate change is, what they think they might need to know in the future and we kind of listed all the, uh, the outputs in a Moscow type um, scenario where must have, should have etc. Um, 
And we're now in the process of developing bespoke forecast um, operations and maintenance models um, where we will simulate the port operations under different climatic conditions, looking at uh, uh, medium term, long term and current conditions so that we can compare the results and generate the meaningful climate impact indicators. As I mentioned earlier, Four Coast Marine is entirely data agnostic. We are using the Deltares and DMI generated data that's part of this uh, contract, but there's no reason why we couldn't be using what's been done in the other programs, um, provided it's suitable for our purposes, and that might mean some kind of data transformation, but that's a separate issue. And essentially, we are using the same base data, for example, the Eurocordex climate projection information. And where we want to get to after looking at the, uh, or de developing the bespoke models is we would want to try and uh, make them more generic so that they can be deployed very quickly in a prototype sort of way elsewhere. And that will then allow uh, the users to look spatially around the European coast to see where their operations might be more or less affected by climate change. Ports and harbours, the impact of climate on offshore wind farms is probably, well, much better research so far than uh, port operations. But there's an interesting quote at the bottom that I picked up from Associated British Ports, who own quite a number of significant ports around the UK. Um, they've done quite a lot of work looking at how climate change might impact them. And they say that whilst uh, future predictions related to climate change, uh, changes in storminess, and extreme weather events are inconclusive, and there might be people here who disagree with this. However, they do say that even small changes may impact their operations. So it adds a bit of context to why we've chosen to look at ports for this project, this contract. So the Inchcape simulation in particular, this is the wind farm offshore Dundee. Um, we've set them all, we're in the process of setting the model up to look at the impact of meta-ocean conditions changing over many years, 20, 30, 40, 50 years under the different climate scenarios that Deltares are generating data for. We simulate turbines in operation and generating revenue according to the wind speed direction and uh, power curve information. And then we insert random turbine failure according to reliability information, factor information for that particular type of turbine. And then we look at the model of uh, vessel operations for preventative corrective maintenance according to the uh, workable mid-ocean conditions. If the conditions aren't workable, then obviously the vessels can't go out to do the work. If the wave heights are too high, um, etc. We run thousands of simulations, each one with a slightly different starting condition. Um, that might be time, it might be different mid-ocean information, it might be... Uh, operation duration, might be slightly different wave height thresholds, etc., etc., And we build up these scenarios um, in conjunction with the client. Um, and then we can generate statistics, for example, looking at the cost of the offshore, uh, the operational maintenance uh, under these different scenarios. And some of the questions that um, we might want to answer, do I need more robust turbines in the light of climate change? Do I need better vessels that are better able to uh, cope with the expected conditions, for example. This is, there's only two more slides. Um, looking at the port operations, this is a flowchart of one operation that happens in a port, and that is a vessel arrives, waits, takes a pilot on board, or not, according to the weather, in which case it might have to go because of a charter party agreement, <coughs> charter agreement, or it comes alongside, discharges cargo. So you can see it's pretty complex. This is one single operation in a port. There are others needed for uh, pilot movements, tug movements, cargo operations, etc. So it's a pretty complex, opera complex job that we've got to actually accurately simulate the operations in the, report, uh, in, in the port and to make it meaningful and reliable for a uh, port of time. This will then allow them to make uh, investment decisions in the future different cargo handling equipment, perhaps that has got a better wind speed tolerate, uh, tolerance, changes in the requirements for tugs, if the wind speeds do increase, high-sided vessels such as uh, car carriers and container ships might need more or more powerful tugs. Uh, climate change might change the sedimentation patterns in the harbour, so more dredging might be required. And 
it may well be that the seawalls outside the harbour are too low. These are some of the questions, the, just a, a handful, uh, that we will be seeking to answer. So in summary, um, we're enabling the marine industry operations to benefit from the climate science that we've been hearing about in the last couple of days. Um, and it's seriously impressive, I have to say. Um, we believe that forewarned is forearmed. The sooner we can engage people, ports, and our clients in this, the better place they will be to make the decisions that they may well need to make um, going forward. I mentioned that what we're doing is based on uh, agnostic gaming technology to simulate operations before they need to happen, thereby increasing risk management um, and showing due diligence. We must use the latest climate data because we will have to uh, demonstrate to our clients the reliability of that data. Uh, we will allow our clients through this process to improve their risk management to life in infrastructure and financial risk management through optimising their strategies before they actually carry out those strategies. Um, they can plan to adapt for climate change if necessary. They may even increase their efficiency and reduce their costs as a result. And finally, uh, we're looking at two sectors. This technology uh, has many other applications, including offshore commissioning, shipping and marine leisure. But the one thing I would say is to close is that this is a process, I, I mentioned it earlier, this is a process of education. We need to make sure that whatever we generate as part of this contract is usable to clients who are busy and it's not their first concern. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Martin. Um, I'm afraid we're uh, out of time for questions, but I do want to ask you a question. Uh, just so if you can give us a, a very brief answer. I'm very interested in your comment about the Port of Tyne, yeah. that they didn't uh, know anything about climate change, and then you arrived, and uh, all of a sudden they changed it. What's the magic word they used? Um, this is interesting. We just sat and told them about it, told them what we were doing. Have you thought about climate change? Not really. It's not. Well, this is what we're doing, and this is why we think we can help you. You know, you can benefit from this. Would you like to get involved? Well, very simple. Okay, let's try this exercise at home as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that you should also be aware of the risks associated with it. No? Uh, and, uh, yes. Yes. The, well, this is what I was saying. It's an education process. It's all very well um, generating climate impact indicators and saying, "Look, guys." This is what you can find out from this, and this is what we're showing you and telling you, and you need to go away and invest X millions in the next 20 years. But we need to make, make it very clear that there are risks associated with climate projection work and, and, and the data that it's all based on. So it's part of an education thing, which is any good consultant will tell you is part of the job. Exactly. As in all decision making, there's also risks yep. and uh, weighting so. factors. So thank you very much, Martin, again. and. Uh, <laughs> We're close, uh, we're close to closing the session, so before we do, uh, uh, I'd like to uh, thank again all the speakers. Uh, very uh, great talks. I really enjoyed them. I hope you did as well. So let's, uh, sorry for last time, put your hands together.